Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha, if you're new here, and today I wanted to discuss how to excel on your diagnostic and interventional radiology rotations. I've been getting questions about this. I thought it was a really good time to talk about it because I know everyone is about to embark on their rotations and they want to secure that letter of recommendation. So let's definitely talk about it. The first thing I wanted to talk about are just general principles. So how can you excel on any rotation really? And um, that is by knowing your patient. So when even on a diagnostic radiology rotation, if they're looking at a CT scan and you have access to the EMR, it always helps to just quickly scan to see what they're looking for, to look at labs, etc. If you have like an iPad, you can have it open just to see what they are looking for for that study. And sometimes that can even help the resident that you're working with, like, oh, this patient has a white count, or you know, the hemoglobin dropped a lot like in the last 24 hours, so they're looking for a source of bleeding. And sometimes the resident will know that, but sometimes you can come up with like an interesting history for the patient. Oh, the patient has a history of GI bleed in the past and things like that, that the resident may not have had time to look at or look for. So in that way, you can be really useful. And the same thing goes for interventional radiology. You obviously want to know the history of the patient. You want to know what you guys are going to be doing today and knowing their past medical history. You know that those things are very helpful and it will definitely help your resident if you have done your homework on all of the patients for the day. And so those are just general principles, knowing what you're doing, why you're doing it, what you're looking for, for anything, a procedure, an IR, or even just a CT scan, a PET scan, whatever you're working on with the resident, that will be really helpful. And remember that your goal is to make the resident's life a little bit easier, so those are things that we really appreciate, and um, I think that will serve you well on your radiology rotations. Staying engaged in a diagnostic radiology rotation can be a little bit difficult just because you are watching someone else do studies and read studies. So what I would suggest is just taking that time to look in the EMR and see the different things that they may be looking for for this patient in this study, and also learning about the modalities themselves, like what is a CT scan, what is a plane radiograph, what is um, PET CT, what is nuclear medicine, what is MR. And this can be a really good learning opportunity for you to have the resident show you the different imaging that the patient has had, how things look on an ultrasound versus a CT. It can be really interesting and eye-opening to see the same structure on multiple modalities. So I would suggest you know asking clinically relevant questions like that asking things that show that you're really interested in radiology but also I would take the time on your diagnostic radiology rotation to rotate through the different radiology subspecialties as much as you can spend a day in women's imaging you'll see a totally different side of radiology spend a day in interventional if you're on a diagnostic radiology rotation even MSK neuro you'll see how different every department really is and that's what makes radiology so interesting is that there's so many different subspecialties that function in their own way that's kind of their own little world definitely take the time to do that because that will help you figure out what kind of what you're interested in what kind of career you see for yourself and that could even make you more interested in one like diagnostic versus interventional radiology you'll realize the different strengths of each subspecialty you'll realize how procedural you can be or how diagnostic you can be and I think that's really important too to get out of diagnostic radiology rotation is to figure out like what really is diagnostic radiology? And it's all of these things. So I think that's really, really important is to spend time in every different subspecialty as much as you can. If you want to know about like resources or textbooks, obviously there's Radiopedia, which is my favorite website for radiology learning. It's so good. You can also look at YouTube videos. There are so many educational YouTube videos on different topics, different difficult topics. So if you're going to be spending a day on MRI, for example, I would Spent, or MSK I should say, I would say, you know, look up the anatomy of a knee MRI, things that are kind of basic, things that you know you'll see. Um, another really popular book that I actually really like is called Felsen's Principles of Chest Rentgenology. If you are going into diagnostic radiology, this is a really, really solid foundation for chest x-rays, which I think are really one of the most difficult imaging studies that we do because it's not a CT, you can't see everything, you're kind of guessing what's in front, what's behind, and this book really helps you understand what a normal x-ray should look like and what makes it abnormal. So I think that's a really good basic text if you do want to read something during your radiology rotation. So for interventional radiology, it's obviously a little bit easier to stay engaged because you are following patients daily, you're doing procedures every day, and those are easy things to look up, you know what I mean? Like you see the procedures for the day, you know you're going to be placing a port, you're going to be doing an IVC filter, you're going to be doing a drain abscess, abscess drain, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. So 
those are things you can look up ahead of time. You know, you can look ahead to the schedule. If you don't know where to find the schedule, obviously ask your residents. They will definitely help you with that. Learn the different types of wires. Learn the IR lingo. Like what does three for nine mean? What does six for 18 mean? And these are things you can also ask the technologists. So when you have some downtime, just go up to the technologist and say, what does this mean? What wires are we gonna use? What is the difference between all these wires? And they are so nice. They will definitely teach you whatever it is you wanna know. So I would definitely suggest talking to them and talking to your residents. But there are also a lot of really good reference textbooks that I would suggest that you definitely get at least one, especially if you're going into radiology. And so one that I really like is the requisites interventional radiology. I find it really easy to digest. Um, it goes through basically every procedure. It tells you the different variables, you know, like this, you could do it this way, you could do it that way. And they're also, those are good things to know when you go in the room because things can change and you might have to all of a sudden do a different technique, do a different approach. And if you've read ahead, you know, you, you're gonna be on top of it. You're gonna know why it's happening, what's going on. So I would really suggest reading about every procedure the night before. Another book that I've heard a lot about is the IR Playbook. I personally haven't read that one. I really like the Requisite series, but but that's another one that you can check out because I think it's a little bit smaller and more um, referenceable than the IR, than the requisite. So that's another book that you could use. And there are also lots of YouTube videos about interventional radiology procedures like fire videos that you could also reference when you're studying on your downtime. So I think that between all of these things, reading about every procedure, reading about different modalities, reading about chest x-rays, you should be in pretty good shape. The main thing is to be present show up early, stay late, help the resident with their tasks, and you know, be a team player. It's pretty much the same as every other rotation. I always say this, but you don't have to be the smartest kid, but you do have to be the most hardworking. That's really what shows. And really with that, that's the end of this video. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that that helped you. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out at Yesha Gupta MD. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye. A diagnostic radiology rotation, it can hard to on a diagnostic radiology rotation, it can harm. Oh my god.